right. <coughs> You're li- listening to Radio Lab. Radio Lab. From WNYC. See? Yep. And NPR. And I assume we're live on the air now. We don't do live. You, have you guys ever talked to each other? I don't think so, no. Oh, this, so this is Chad Abunrod. Well, hi. This is Jim Glick. Hey, how are you? Fine, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Rainbows. Rainbows, rainbows. Okay, so we're going to start today with author <clears throat> James Glick. As I recall, you wanted to talk about Isaac Newton. That's right. We did call him to talk about Isaac Newton, but more specifically, colors. All right, Isaac Newton, he's 23 years old. 1665. And he's he's home for the holidays. No, there's no holiday. He's home for the plague. <laughs> there was actually a plague. They sent everybody home from school. In any case, he's in his room, famously solving all these mysteries of the world. And one of the questions that he thinks about during this break is... What are colors? Where do they come from? Like, when I see the color red, is that red, is it inside my head, or is it something that exists sort of out there in the world? Is the light without, or is the light within? Hmm. So he pokes a knife into his eye. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean? Here's what Newton wrote in his notebook. I took a bodkin, put it betwixt my eye and the bone, as near to the back side of my eye as I could, and pressing my eye with the end of it, it appeared several white, dark, and colored circles. Did that lead him to some conclusion about where the spots live, whether they're outside or inside? No. <laughs> this didn't get him very far. Because seeing spots when you poke your eye doesn't tell you much about what color is. But, um, but what he did next later, did, and this one he's a little more famous for. He got himself a prism, which is just a, a bit of glass shaped like a pyramid. It wasn't so easy for him to get his hands on a prism, but he did. Then he shut his blinds so the room was totally dark. But he poked a little hole in one of the blinds. And then he waited. And the sun had to be at just the right angle. And he waited. And when the sun got to just the right spot, a ray of light shot through the room. Newton immediately stuck his prism into the light, and the light shattered and became a rainbow on the wall. Or, in Newton's own words, a colored image of the sun. Now, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Mm. A colored image of the sun. That's Victoria Finley. She wrote a book about color, and she says, the thing to understand about this experiment is that at the time, people believed that white light was given by God or given given by this amazing thing called nature. The light from the sun was sort of holy. Yeah. If there was anything that was pure, it was white. So when the prism did the rainbow thing, which people knew prisms did, They just figured the colors are in there in the glass. In other words, that rainbow had nothing to do with the light itself. That was just the prism. Adding some kind of impurities to the light. Oh, wow. I hadn't thought of the possibility that the prism is muddying the light. It's polluting the light. How do you know that the prism isn't generating these colors? Yeah. So he got a second prism, and this was the trick. While the first prism was still making that rainbow on the wall... He moved a few feet away, and he held up a second prism in the blue area to see what would happen to the blue light. Would the prism add more colors to the blue light? Or would it be transformed in some other way? And what he found was nothing happens. It remains blue. So he thought, hmm, if the blue light isn't getting muddied by the prism, then maybe the prism wasn't muddying the white light to begin with. Maybe that rainbow of colors was actually coming from inside the white light. He inferred that the first prism is dividing light into its constituent parts. Which means that the white light we see around us is actually constituted of all of these colors. The colors were in the light. They are the light. He had his answer. Light is a physical thing in the physical world. You can tweak it, test it, study it. This was the beginning of everything we know about light today. Which Newton put us on the road toward finding. That ultraviolet rays, x-rays, radio waves, they're all different energies of light. And colors are just energies within that little sliver that we can see. And that has led to our understanding of the greenhouse effect, knowing what stars are made of, even the age of our own universe. Mm. 